Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. Basil here with a new Sony flagship. This is the Xperia Z5, released alongside the Z5 Compact and the Z5 Premium. This is the middle of the road guy, but it's not that middle of the road, still a flagship. Full HD display, front firing speakers, metal frame, frosted glass back. It's a mixture of old and new, and really, really familiar spec sheet to what we've seen. Right hand side though, you do have a fingerprint scanner, which doubles up as a power button. Sony's ditched the really, really familiar round power button that we've seen in the past. As far as the design goes, OmniBalance designs come through again, super classical, heavy bezels up top and bottom of that 5.2 inch display. Right hand side, it's not just that power button, you can also see a volume rocker and a two stage camera button. Down at the base, micro USB connector, not micro USB type C, and you've also got a lanyard dock too. Xperia insignia is etched into that bottom left hand side as well as a, there being a flap. If I yank it open, you can see all that's under here is a micro SD and a SIM slot. So this is going to be expandable by 200 gigabytes, which is mightily impressive. 32 gig onboard memory, 3.5 mil headphone jack. This is going to also be compatible with a set of headphones that Sony is going to be releasing, which allows for both digital noise cancellation and high resolution audio all at the same time. Around the back, it's a new camera sensor, 23 megapixels. And what's really awesome about this is that it combines a new focus system with a range of other things to make it a better camera and that's finally the case for Sony given the fact we haven't seen anything new from them really in hardware since the Sony Xperia Z1 which is a bit crazy really and um, you can also see below that there's a flash and so talking around the screen full HD nothing crazy as far as pixel density goes it's 424 pixels per inch inside it is Android Lollipop not Android M it's a familiar UI to what we've seen before but slightly different too for example if I jump into the applications tray Sony's gone and ditched that menu to the left hand side that helps you organize your apps instead you've got this much much more stock experience I guess so it's going to be familiar to anyone coming from another Android phone. Pull it down from the top and you can see notifications and quick toggles and you can quickly access your settings as well. And this is going to be very, very familiar to Sony users in the past. Assume there are things like double tap to wake on here if I tap the display, glove mode, etc. Um, yeah, it's all there, tap to wake the screen. So the UI is not really worth dwelling upon too much. But what definitely is, is the multimedia side of things. So obviously there's that screen, there are those speakers, and this is what we've seen before on the Z3 Plus. Um, but that camera can fire up and focus in 0.03 seconds. The fastest auto focus around, um, according to Sony, and it does that by a hybrid phase detection implementation. So it phase detects and continuous auto focuses as well um, in order to achieve a crazy, crazy fast uh, also focus. What's also awesome about it is that you can record 4K on here for ages. I just recorded for in excess of 10 minutes and this thing didn't even get particularly hot. It was really warm but definitely was nowhere near that 50 degrees Celsius that I got when I was recording on the Z3 Plus for no more than a couple of minutes. So really, really happy about that. I really wanted to love the Z3 Plus but I just couldn't. It was just unusably hot. This thing looks like it is solving that issue right there and then. And you know what? There's a Snapdragon 810 in inside paired with three gig of RAM. So it's running with a similar chipset, similar um, spec sheet in general. As far as the battery goes, it's also got a 2900 milliamp battery, just like its predecessor. So there really isn't very much separating this, but I have a feeling that the things that are, the things that are gonna make this phone really usable and easy to recommend in day to day that I just couldn't really recommend the Z3 Plus on. All your standards on here, obviously, that you'd expect from a flagship gyroscope, Cat6 LT if you're here in the UK, faster if you're elsewhere. Um, in addition to that, obviously, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. But if you've got any specific questions, anything you want us to find out about the Z5, file them in the comments section below. Ultimately, I'm impressed. It's a decent looking phone, and to be honest, it's exactly what the Z3 Plus should have been all along. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you click that like button. And if you like BTech in general, subscribe to the channel. That's exactly how you're gonna stay on top of everything we do. Thanks for watching.
micro SD and a micro SIM slot. So this is going to be expandable by 200 gigabytes, which is mightily impressive. 32 gig onboard memory, 3.5 mil headphone jack. This is going to also be compatible with a set of headphones that Sony is going to be releasing, which allows for both digital noise cancellation and high resolution audio all at the same time. Around the back, it's a new camera sensor, 23 megapixels. And what's really awesome about this is that it combines a new focus system with a range of other things to make it a